Thanks, Tyler. And I must say, actually, before I forget in the presentation, that uh, one of the reasons that we've seen the success that we have as of late um, is specifically because of the uh, motivation uh, that Tyler and his team provide, uh, not only the motivation, but the support as well from OAFT, uh, from NSERC, and others as well. So I literally wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So thank you so much. Um, as Tyler indicated, we're operating two businesses, two sister companies, uh, but it all started with Smart Greens, uh, the food distribution brand. Uh, as most Canadian companies, or sorry, most companies uh, as a whole in tech, uh, we started with an idea that partially belonged to somebody else. As a matter of fact, we imported the technology from the United States. Uh, some uh, late night speculations, uh, ruminations of, of what it is uh, that life should mean to people. Uh, resulted in, in a conversation between our two co-founders, Eric and I. Into the, Into the speaker, a little better. Let me do this. I'm also pretty short. You, you can take it out. If you want. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm going to show off the two new stains I have on my shirt. <laughs> Great. So uh, we started with Smart Greens. Uh, here is a food distribution company. We wanted to be people growing food in a shipping container in Cornwall, Ontario, where we started this uh, a couple of years ago, a little under two years ago, actually. Uh, and what resulted in uh, an immediate passion uh, and uh, uh, overwhelming desire to do something different. Um, very quick history, uh, two years ago I was not a vertical farmer. I, I, I knew not much of anything to do with agriculture other than the fact that I've been vegan for 19 years, so I guess I know what kale looks like. Um, but that, that's about the extent of it, and the same with my co-founder Eric, uh, who's sitting quietly in the corner. Um, uh, was, was in the SEO uh, and web space. So we, we bought this cool shipping container that grew food from a company in Boston. Uh, and uh, you know what, we, 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 we killed it. We absolutely uh, ended up having a huge following of supporters in our community in Cornwall, Ontario, who were buying our food, including grocery stores, restaurants, food producers, and direct to consumers, uh, or, or direct buyers of the produce that were growing literally in a shipping container. Uh, but what happened is the technology actually fell apart, literally. Uh, over and over and over again. So we decided uh, we needed to grow based on demand for our food that we've created in the Smart Greens brand, and we decided to spin off uh, another company, which is now Modular Farms. And before I start going on about it, I must state that Modular Farms is all but uh, 10 months old, so we're a little new at what we're doing, uh, but we've hit the ground running. Um, so what we've established is a new format or redefinition of the container farming segment using hydroponics and LED supplemental lighting, growing food literally in containers. We started with shipping containers, a product that we bought from somebody else, but we quickly determined that it didn't last. A lot of issues with the te not the technology as a whole, but as a part of it, but the shipping container too. As romantic of an idea as it is to pick up shipping containers that dot the landscape across Canada and repurpose them, repurpose them into urban farms, uh, the reality is, is uh, they, they, they aren't so well suited for it, it turns out. Uh, having to use a blowtorch to get into your farm every morning when it's minus 30 outside kind of sucks. <laughs> Which is why we've now established a whole new product. So we've pur purpose-built uh, and redefined the technology uh, by scrutinizing every little nut and bolt that's gone into these things. We are now an ag tech company uh, with global demand for our products based around the technology that we've created with our uh, systems integration and LED lighting technology partners and InterVision Group who are also here with us today. Um, and our collaborations with PhDs in agronomy um, and industry experts in the industry of course, uh, pardon me, in, in the industry of agriculture. Um, so our systems are different. We don't use shipping containers anymore because they suck. Um, I can say that, right? I just did. Um, so we've, we've uh, co-developed uh, what essentially is uh, an R28 uh, or, or a very well insulated um, container uh, that is still transportable by road, by sea, uh, and by rail. Uh, it's 10 by 10 by 40, and basically within that square foot, it's a 400 square feet, using 200 square feet of space to grow an acre's worth of food year over year. Um, we're using about 1% of the water that would be used in traditional agriculture, uh, and uh, we're using less energy than a household consumes. Uh, we're also developing new technologies to fit in this space. Uh, not only was the shipping container broken, but the tech inside was in inefficient, inadequate. It didn't exist, essentially. So the competitors in our space are currently using things like residential air conditioners, ornamental LEDs meant for ambient lighting, basically off-the-shelf stuff that you can get, in some cases, for at Home Depot. Uh, and as great as that sounds, and as inexpensive as it would be to build and supply to the market, um, an air conditioner in minus 30 trying to remove the, uh, I guess, the 
humidity in the air and warm the air. Uh, it just doesn't work. It's not the right technology to be used. Uh, so we've also developed uh, our own tandem staged uh, air homogenizing climate controls. Uh, basically, that means is that before the air even touches the plants, it runs through the system and it gets treated. It's either heated or chilled, dehumidified, and we're adding CO2 to the environment as well. Uh, and before I uh, exhaust this tech stuff too much, I'm actually just going to state um, that um, the total systems approach to these types of modules or container farming approaches is really, really important. So a lot of people think that because you put lights and pipes in a box that you can grow food. The reality is, is you can. Uh, it's just how well can you do it and how consistently you can do it before it falls apart. Another different thing about our company is that we've actually realized that scalability and modularity, uh, hence the name modular farms, were really non-existent. Uh, with all of our competitors, if you're buying a shipping container farm and you wanted to scale up to two or three or ten shipping container farms, you had to buy the same hardware over and over again. Uh, shipping container farm is a shipping container farm is a shipping container farm. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of redundant hardware in that configuration. So what we've done is we've eliminated some of the uh, costly and both financially and in terms of real estate inside the containers, we've removed the unnecessary hardware or redundant hardware in our scaling models. So the first foundational farm, our modular farm, can also be complemented by a full suite of six additional connectable modules. So the macro farm, for example, is the second farm that one of our consumers will purchase, and it foregoes the redundant hardware like the large germination station and packaging table uh, because it's already in the first farm and replaces it with wall-to-wall -wall, uh, production space, uh, actually making it 150% uh, more uh, productive than the initial farm uh, for the same cost, so much better revenues as you scale up. We're also incorporating new technologies like water capture modules, uh, which allow us to extract ambient air from the environment and uh, turn that into usable potable water for the farms. And we're working with a local partner, not too far from here actually, to develop a microgrid module, which allows us to use renewable energy to tie our container farms <coughs> into the grid and supplement with renewable energy, or to pull them off the grid uh, for use in remote areas as well. Here's a little uh, diagram to show how our farms can connect together. Uh, the idea is that the configurations can be endless. The idea is to create new opportunities for crop diversity and farm ROI. We're also operating another revenue stream uh, through modular farms called, uh, actually that's an old URL, uh, we love it so much, zipgrow-canada.com. Uh, it's horrible by the way, so you can laugh if you want. Um, it, it's been replaced by zipgrow.ca. So zipgrow-canada.com is our e-commerce site. Uh, it's been up and running for uh, about 60 days now, and we're fulfilling orders across Canada and abroad as well. Uh, we have orders going to Portugal, to France, uh, to Asia, and to Australia uh, in just 60 days. This is one of the products that we've licensed. So we're also working with international collaborators to uh, acquire shared IPs uh, and technology plays. And one of them is the Zipro Towers. So the Zipro Tower is the vertical column uh, that supports plant growth inside of our systems. And the system that I'm showing here, the Zipro Farm Wall, is actually a residential institutional unit that we can use to deploy in schools uh, and in households to grow food. As a matter of fact, I've been using one in my living room for about 11 months now. My children actually tend to it. They're 14 and 10 years old, Mackenzie and Parker. Uh, and they plant the seeds, uh, transplant the seeds into the towers. And we're growing currently cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, spinach and kale, uh, and romaine lettuce on our farm wall in our house, in our living room, no matter the weather outside. Uh, we've also just sent four of these to Yellowknife, and they're being deployed in elementary schools in the Yellowknife and the Hay River area as well. The Zip Farm is uh, the larger scale of things for our business. So not only are we are developing uh, and providing solutions for small applications, for hobby farmers at home, for schools, uh, and in the container modular farm, uh, but also the zip farm, which uses existing infrastructures like this building, for example, or a warehouse or a retail space to convert that space into a farm as well. Using the same technologies and practices, we deploy the zip farm in a modular and scalable system to grow food. Uh, very, very efficient and a fantastic ROI. The zip farm uses, again, all the same technologies as the other farming implements do. And a little bit about Smart Greens as well, where we started it all. So the Smart Greens brand is really our attempt to redefine uh, the global food distribution model. We really believe that food should be grown where it's consumed or as close to the market or consumer as possible. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of our mandates, our corporate mandates, is 100 kilometer local always. And it's a policy that we followed from day one. It's the one that we continue to grow with even as we deploy internationally. So Smart Greens um, has year-round food production within 100 kilometers of sales. 
Uh, we always deliver the same day that we harvest. As a matter of fact, the food is often consumed within minutes of being harvested. Yes, it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. We've actually delivered to a restaurant, the salad was made, and delivered to the table within 10 minutes of, of, of harvest. We have that capability. Um, we're also eliminating food waste at the grocery store, which is actually one of the coolest things that we're doing. And we're doing this by maintaining the production uh, harvest delivery times to match the consumption demand of the grocery stores. Uh, we had a pilot uh, with a metro grocery store, uh, one of our customers, uh, and in a matter of three weeks, we eliminated the food waste associated to our brand. We're also using the brand to engage new farmers across Canada. Our other mandate is farmer empowerment and education. We're allowing people like ourselves who have no background in agriculture or farming to become smart greens farmers too. So in a sense, we're using the uh, a, a model similar to a franchise model without using the F word. Uh, we've created a licensing opportunity for new farmers to use our technology but become smart greens farmers by providing them all the tools necessary to be successful in their immediate marketplace. So the technology itself, but also things like packaging, labeling, uh, marketing materials, um, and of course, ass assistance with distribution and acquiring customers. <coughs> this is a very quick snapshot. It's actually about uh, eight months old. Um, this is the start of us moving across the country. Um, we currently are engaged with over 50 farmers in Canada who are lined up to become smart bees farmers across the country from coast to coast to coast. Uh, we're deploying technologies as far north as the Cow and Kudlatuk in Nunavut. Uh, I'm actually going to be in Hay River in seven days to attend a workshop. We're looking at an installation there. Uh, and we are establishing an office in Asia right now, uh, looking at partners in France and Australia and elsewhere around the world. Not only to use our technology, but also to become smart bees farmers. And of course, always be one of our global Oops. We also have significant social impact. Uh, recent uh, participants of the Impact 8 program and uh, grant recipients of that program. Um, we're eliminating food waste at the grocery store and in the marketplace uh, and at the table. Um, a, a significant reduction in electrical consumption and water consumption. As a matter of fact, our farms um, usually can hold about 4,500 plants at 200 square feet because we're growing volumetrically or vertically. Um, and we're using about 8 gallons of water a day um, to feed 4,500 plants. It's like flushing a flood twice. And moving forward, we're working in uh, mobile app development. As a matter of fact, Smart Harvest, you see a little screenshot over there, is a farm, farm hand in your pocket, if you will. Uh, we're also working on other distribution models and uh, cloud support for our farmers. Um, currently building uh, POs, or pardon me, working to fulfill 40 POs in uh, 2016 already. Um, 20 farms alone sold to one customer. Uh, in the GTA area, so we're going to have a big expansion in the GTA soon. Um, now looking at worldwide rollout as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm heading back to Singapore uh, in the next month or so uh, to begin building a zip farm there for one of our commercial customers. Um, and we're working on developing the full suite of modules with our partners. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you.